Hello guys, we're back, we're back, we're back. Thank you all so much for joining us here at our CHM YouTube channel. Listen, I know we have been gone for just a few weeks, um, but the Lord had us really on um, on a on a holy sabbatical, so to speak, on a on a Selah moment. He actually, after our last video, which was actually the first video for the month of July, we talked about rest. We talked about uh, the importance of not striving and struggling, but being able to to believe God and to to get into the rest of God. And what we didn't know at the time, the Lord would literally put us on a pause. And so we went through some things um, just a few days after that last video. Our family went through a time of loss, went through a time of pain and struggle. But I can tell you, God's grace has absolutely proven to be sufficient for us. Uh, now, initially, I had no intention of putting this on pause, but the Lord told me um, that he wanted us not to try to minister out of that place that we were in. You know, sometimes we need to um, to hear from God and not try to push past where we are. Just be in that moment with God. And in that time that he gave us for those few weeks that we were not actually recording videos, um, we were spending that time with God. He was healing us, strengthening us, giving us um, the grace that we need, restoring our souls. And so, like I said, we're back. We are back and we are ready and super excited to move forward in the word and in the work of the Lord. Amen. So we're going to get started. Even before we actually get into our word for the day, I have some announcements. You know, although we weren't recording videos, God was still at work and he's been busy opening doors, giving us opportunity, putting things together for us. And so we're excited. Uh, our very next worship and word gathering will be uh, at the end of this month, August the 26th. On Friday, August the 26th at 7 o'clock p.m. Of course, we will be at City Church Memphis again, 8200 Macon Road. But we're super excited because this is going to be a special youth edition. Yes, a special youth edition. This is actually a vision that God birthed in me actually about a year ago. Um, almost 358 days to be exact. And I say that because... It was actually on my birthday last year. Uh, my granddaughter and I, we share a birthday. So we were going out to lunch to celebrate our birthday. And we were just talking about, um, she had gone to youth camp and she had been in some other youth ministries that had really ministered to her soul. And so we were just talking about that. And while we were talking about that, the Lord said to me, the Holy Spirit said to me rather, you should do a youth worshiping word. And so I thought, oh, okay, that sounds good as I'm thinking to myself and talking with the Holy Spirit. So I thought, let me try it out on her. So I mentioned it to her. I was like, well, what do you think about us doing a youth worshiping word? And she was all excited about it. She said, yeah, yeah, I think that'll be good. I think it'll be good for the for the youth and it'll be something that we would love to do. So um, I kind of prayed on it, went back and talked with our youth pastor, talked with Jayla who leads our worship and word um, gatherings and worship. She also volunteers for the youth. Uh, at our church. And so I, I stopped them one Sunday, kind of gave them a vision of what God was showing showing me and just asked them to pray through it. I was like, just pray through this with me. And the youth pastor said immediately, he said, I already know it's God. What I didn't know, they had already been working on some youth nights for the, uh, some worship nights for the youth already. I had no idea. So when the Holy Spirit spoke to me that we should do a youth worship and word, it just kind of fell right in line with what they were already doing. And so we're excited. Now we're full circle. It is here. And again, that's coming up on August the 26th, 7 o'clock p.m. Now, I know I'm saying it's a special youth edition, but it is not limited to the youth. Hear me, because most of them can't drive, so parents are going to have to come anyway. But what it is, it is a time that's going to be geared toward the youth uh, and worship and the word. And even we have some fun games, some prizes and that kind of thing that's geared toward the youth. But the word and the worship is geared toward the body of Christ as a whole. Uh, our youth pastor, Pastor A.T. Gatlin, is going to be ministering the word. And he is a phenomenal speaker, uh, a young man who's skilled with the word of God. Uh, if you haven't heard him preach, I encourage you to go to our city church, um, either our Facebook page or our YouTube page for city church. And go out there and listen. He actually preached the word um, this past Sunday on July the 31st. He ministered the word of God in a powerful way. So if you're interested in hearing him, you can go to our City Church Facebook page or our YouTube page and hear him preach um, this past Sunday. You're already familiar with Jayla. She leads us in worship already at our Worship and Word gathering. So they're going to be coming together. 
but the word and the worship is going to be geared toward the whole body of Christ. So we're encouraging youth absolutely to come, parents, parents, grandparents, with the whole family to come out and be a part of what Worship and Word is doing. And if you've never been, this will be a good time for you to come and bring your youth group to be a part of this special youth edition for Worship and Word. Also, coming up in the month of September, uh, September 30th, actually, to uh, uh, October 1st, I will be ministering at a women's retreat, and the retreat is, is uh, sponsored by Amen for Women's Ministry. And that is a phenomenal ministry that ministers to the body of Christ. It's not just for women. I think they actually began a male chapter of it as well sometime last year. But it's geared toward ministering to the real needs. It's led by Minister Bobby Hobson at World Overcomers Outreach Ministry. And it's the type of ministry that believes in getting into the trenches with people. Uh, ministering to them financially, ministering to them spiritually, men holistically, whatever they may need, food, clothing, and shelter. Amen for women's ministry. Get down in the trenches to be able to strengthen the women, strengthen their family, and help help them to come to a place of wholeness. So that, again, that retreat will be September 30th through October the 1st, and I'll actually be ministering at 1 o'clock. So it's an overnight retreat. And if you're interested in coming overnight, you can go to my uh, Cynthia Dotson Horton Facebook page. And the flyers and all the information, the fee schedule and all of that is out there. Or if you're only interested in attending on that Saturday, um, you can come Saturday. There's a fee schedule out there for that as well. And you can spend the day with us. You'll get two meals, and uh, two physical meals, but you'll also be fed on the Word of God as well. So that's coming up again September 30th through October the 1st. So we're excited about that. And then lastly, I just want to say, if you would like to have me come and minister at your church, um, minister to your congregation, minister to your women's ministry, uh, Bible study, or what have you, if there's anything that you would like to have me come and minister to your church, then feel free to reach out to me. You can contact me at my email address, which is cnhortmen at gmail.com. That's C Y N H O R T. M I N at gmail.com. I'll be glad to come out and minister to you the word of God. Or even if you want me to do it digitally through Zoom or Facebook Live, any of those opportunities, we're more than glad to consider that and to come out and minister to you. So I believe that's all of our announcements. We had to get caught up from the last three weeks. So now we can go ahead and get into the word. And I'm excited about um, what God has given me. As I said, we haven't met in three weeks, but the Lord has still been talking. He's still been ministering to our hearts. And so as I saw him about what he wanted um, to share with you all today, he took me to a particular passage of scripture. And I initially thought, okay, well, this name is going to, you know, what the, the title of it is. A lot of times I don't get a title until I'm completely finished um, constructing and orchestrating the word. And then God would give me the title, which was the case this time. I initially thought it was going to be, uh, it's not in vain, but that, that wasn't what he gave me. Uh, but we're coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. And in this particular passage of scripture, this is the Apostle Paul addressing the church at Corinth where he actually had help to establish, to begin this church. He got it established and got it stabilized to the point where he was actually able to leave it in the hands of the leadership while he went on to establish other churches and on his mission. Um, but something had happened by the time we got to chapter 15 here, um, there had been some error that had creeped into the church. People had come in and began to uh, minister their opinion as opposed to the word and the church that the apostle paul had begun had somehow got to the point where they were questioning or doubting the actual resurrection of christ or the that there would be a resurrection from the dead and as he began to minister to them in chapter 15 uh just be, he began to reiterate with them the truth of the word and how our very um faith is founded on the fact and the truth that there is a resurrection from the dead because he goes on to tell that if Christ did not raise from the dead, then we are lost without hope. We are most miserable and without any hope. Because our whole faith and belief is founded on the truth that God raised Jesus from the dead. And so that's what he had been talking to them about in chapter 15. 
um, getting them back to the place where he was saying to them, um, and I think it's verse 55, he said, death, where's your sting? Grave, where's your victory? You know, he said, Christ that overcame the grave. And because he overcame the grave, we too have overcome the grave. But in verse 58, which is where God had me to, to go, it says, Paul was saying, now, therefore, in light of all of what we just said, in light of the fact that the resurrection is real and that our entire faith is founded on that truth that God raised Jesus from the dead, Paul is encouraging them. He says, so therefore, my brothers and sisters, with all of that in mind, you be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Knowing that in God, your labor is not in vain. Sometimes we may feel like we toil and we work and we live and we do all that God asks us to do. And we look around and it looks like it's all been for nothing. But I can guarantee you that it is not. And that's why he encourages them to be steadfast. Don't be so easily moved by what other people say. Don't be so easily moved by what things appear to be around you. But he tells them to be steadfast and immovable. Uh, when we look at that word steadfast in the original text in the Greek, it it's come from a word that's called um, hedraios. Hedraios, H-E-D-R-A-I-O-S. And what it means is to be firm in your position in your mind, to be firm, to be well stationed, um, to be securely positioned, not given to fluctuation or moving off course. Again, he says to be Firm in your purpose, in your thought, in your mind, what you're focused on. To stay, to be well stationed and not fluctuating and easily moving off of your course. It also means to be sitting, seated, steadfast and firm. To be positioned where you are. And it made me think about the scripture in Hebrew chapter 10, um, verse 12 and 13, where it talked about Jesus. After he had made the ultimate sacrifice and poured the blood out. On the mercy seat, it says in verse 12, after Jesus made the sacrifice for sin, once and for all, he sat down. He sat down at the right hand of God, waiting on his enemies to be made his footstool. So Jesus, when he was done, he sat down. He's not up running around heaven, scratching his head, trying to figure out what we're going to do in light of a coronavirus or in light of something that didn't go the way we thought it should. He's not scared, or afraid, or nervous. He's seated. And when you're seated, you're in a position of rest, which is what the last uh, video God told us. You're in a position of rest, but you're also in a position of authority. When you're seated, that means you are sitting on your throne like G, like God is seated on his throne. When a king is on his throne, he rules his entire kingdom seated from that position. And so that's what Hebrews talked about when Jesus uh, finished doing the work. He sat down. He's at the right hand of God. And he's not worried about when his enemies are going to become his footstool. He's just waiting because he knows it's going to happen. He's seated in expectation for his enemies to become his footstool. And that word immovable, in the Greek, it means to be without movement or change of your status or change of your location. It means being stable. You are, in other words, it's like sit down and stay there. Sit down and stay right there. In Ephesians chapter 6, God um, is talking about when God raised Jesus from the dead. This is all going back to the truth that God raised Jesus from the dead. And Ephesians 2, 6 says, and God raised us up with him. And when he raised Jesus from the dead, he raised us up with him. And it says that we are also seated with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. As Jesus is seated in his position of authority at the right hand of God is a position of honor. And it is a position of authority at the right hand of the father. We also have been raised with Christ and we also are to be seated in our position of authority and in our position of honor. We don't have to be frantic or worried. We don't have to, we don't want to get up and down. We want to be immovable. We want to be steadfast in where God has seated us, knowing that our enemies will also become our footstool. It may not look like it, but they will. I hear God saying to us even now, we need to make sure that we stay seated in our position of authority. Stay seated in our position of power. Stay seated in our position of expectancy. Stay seated in our position of faith 
and in, in God's word. It may not look like it. It may not look like our promises are being fulfilled, but God said that they would be and they will be. God said that these are the days of fulfillment where his spirit and his prophecies and promises are coming to pass in our life. And it may not look like it in our present situation, but we're to be seated and remain steadfast and unmovable, not frantic and not worried about what it looks like. We're not frantic or worried about how we feel because we can be certain that we're, we have been risen with Jesus. We are seated with him in heavenly places in our position of authority. And when we're seated, then we can decree things. The Bible says in Job, you can decree a thing and it will be established unto you and the light of God's favor will shine on your path. So we don't have to be uh, worried about what things look like. We can continue to decree what God says. So it doesn't matter. Anything we do for God will not return void. It will not be empty. Any word of God's promise and prophecy will not return void. It's going to show up real in our lives. It may not look like it now, even if it don't look like it. But the Lord made me remember as he took me to Ezekiel 37. And it talks about, in verses 1 through 4, it talked about how the Spirit of God caught the prophet up in the realm of the Spirit and took him to a valley of dry bones. And in that valley of dry bones, they weren't just dead dry bones, they were bleached white, which means they had been laying out there an incredibly long time. And in verse 4, God asked him, like, Son of man, can these bones live? And the prophet was smart enough to say, Lord, only you know. <laughs> oh, sovereign Lord, you're the only one that know if these bones can live. But what God did was told him, prophesy. In verse 4, he said, speak a prophetic message to these dry bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. Don't listen to your circumstance. Don't look at how long you've been out here dry and bleached in the sun. But listen, it says, to the word of the Lord. He says, um, in verse 4, he said, Listen to the word of the Lord, because this is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So in verse seven, the prophet says, so I spoke just like he told me to do. I spoke this message just as I was told. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise coming across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as a complete skeleton. Then as I watched, muscles and tissue and sinews formed on these bones. Then skin formed as a covering of the body. But, he says, they still had no breath in them. And sadly, that's what many of us are with our our hope and our vision and our promises. We heard what God said. So we said what God said. And we saw things start to come together. We saw things begin to connect. But all of a sudden there's no life in it. And we feel like because it hasn't happened the way we expected it to happen. That it's dead. But look at what God said to the prophet in verse 9. He didn't leave them there. With just the muscles and the tissue and the sinew and the bones connected and skin on it. That's not where God stopped. He told him this time, he said, speak a prophetic message, not to the bones, but to the wind. Speak to the breath, he says. Speak to the breath and say, oh, sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these dead bodies so that they can live again. So some of us need to go back and prophesy again, this time not to the bones, not to the bits and pieces of our dreams and our promises, but now prophesy to the wind of the spirit, prophesy to the breath of God to breathe into these bones, into these skeletons, to breathe into these things that appear to be dead. Because look what happened in verse 10. It says, so the prophet says, so I spoke again, just as he told me to do. He says, and breath came into the bodies. They all came to life again, and they stood upon their feet, a great and mighty army for the Lord. 
And I want to encourage you all today. I don't care how dead and dry your promises, your dreams, your prophecies may appear to be. They may seem to be scattered and you can't connect one piece to the other. But I promise you, if you will continue to prophesy what the word of God tells you to prophesy. If he tells you to speak to the dead, dry bones of your promises, your dreams, and your desires, then you speak to the bones. But if you have spoken to the bones and they have began to come together, but there appears, appears to be no life, then this time prophesy to the breath, prophesy to the very life of God, and the life of God will come and enter into those bones and enter into that skeleton. And I promise you, it will rise upon his feet and it will come alive for God. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1.18, he was encouraging Timothy. He said, now, Timothy, I tell you, use the prophecies that have been spoken over your life. Use them to wage a mighty warfare. So I want you all to know in this time and in this season, as we're waiting with expectation, we're looking in anticipation for the promises to be fulfilled, for the prophecies to come to pass. Do not be moved out of your seat in your position of authority, out of your seat in your position of power and expectation, because what God said will come to pass. Prophesy the breath of God, the wind of God, the life of God into your situation. Just like he told him, use it as a mighty warfare tool. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how dead and dry it appears to be. If God said it, you keep saying it until you see it. And if you do, I can assure you, just like Ezekiel saw those, those dead, dry bones rise up and become a mighty army for God, I prophesy that your life will rise up and be a mighty weapon of God to use in the kingdom to be a testimony for him because what he said for your life, it will come to pass. Amen. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, we come now before your throne of grace. We exalt you, God. We acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord. We thank you, God, that he is still seated at your right hand. Father, just waiting on every one of his enemies to become his footstool. So God, that says to me, as I have been risen with Jesus Christ, I am also seated in him in heavenly places in a position of honor, in a position of power, in a position of authority, God. And I too am simply waiting for every one of my enemies to become my footstool. I'm waiting for death to become life. I'm waiting for poverty to become prosperity. I'm waiting for sickness to become healing. I'm waiting for delay to become now, to become now in this season. And so God, we are grateful. I pray for these, your people, that they will be encouraged, that they will be strengthened, that they too will take the promises and the prophecies spoken over their life and use it as a mighty weapon of warfare, God, because when we speak your word, your word will not return void. And so, God, we thank you today that we have the victory and we give you all the glory, the honor and the praise. Thanks be to God who always, without doubt, causes us to triumph. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' matchless and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you guys for joining us. This may be a little long, but we had to catch up. We had a lot of announcements. And so I wanted you all to catch up. Remember... August 26, 7 o'clock p.m., the special youth edition of Worship and Word Gathering. We love you all. We'll see you next week. Shalom.